Hey everyone, welcome to the Blue Bridge. And today I'm going to be looking at the Brighton match for um, Sunday, but I'm going to be doing it from a different angle and why our fan base are maybe being a bit unrealistic about um, Chelsea um, for the next season or two, probably. <laughs> Right. Anyway, so we're playing Brighton on on Sunday. Brighton just they won one nil yesterday. Didn't look great in the first half, but a bit better in the second half. Um, helped by um, playing against ten men. Um, they've got an injury crisis, but haven't we heard that before? Didn't we hear that last week for Newcastle? Um, and. The, uh, there, but a few of their players, Solid March, I think, is out. They've got a suspension to their captain as well, uh, Lewis Dunk. And uh, a few others are out injured. Mitoma, there was rumours about him being out injured. But he played yesterday, although he didn't look 100%. So not sure whether he's going to play against uh, Chelsea on Sunday. We'll have to wait and see. Having said that, we've got our own crisis as well because we've got in, we've got no fullbacks tomorrow. We've got suspensions to both Mark Cucurella and uh, Reese James, and uh, so when I say no fullbacks, no right backs because uh, uh, Milo, Milo Gusto hasn't been out training with the guys, so we don't know what the situation is with him. So it looks like we'll have to play four centre backs across the line with Disassi maybe having to fill in a, as a right back. Like up against Mitoma, even though hopefully Mitoma's not 100% fit. So because with a 100% fit Mitoma up against an inexperienced right back, then it's going to give us a lot of trouble. So team news out of the way. Um, I just want to educate the fan base a bit and using Brighton as the blueprint. Uh, there are there's a debate going about on Twitter or and, and other social media platforms that um, fans are accepting low standards at Chelsea, and um, but there are some fan bases, some some of our fan base who don't um, accept our standards being lowered. I'm one of these fans that they're probably referring to because I've, I'm one of these who've been screaming for patience. Do I, am I accepting mediocrity? Of course I'm not. Do I want us to do better? Of course I do. Am I being realistic? Yes, I am. And those people who are saying that they don't want that standards on, shouldn't drop and this is Chelsea. Sorry, you are not being realistic. So, little education piece. They harping back to the days of Roman Abramovich when we were arguably the most successful club in England at that time. So, um, if you go into a time chant tunnel, rewind, Abramovich just rocks into Chelsea. Okay, let's just have a scenario. There's no fight for financial fair play. Other clubs haven't got the financial muscle as Chelsea. Right. So, Brighton are in the Premier League. They've got two players who we saw after, Mark Cucurella and Moise Caicedo. Okay. So, Chelsea say to um, Brighton, we want uh, Cucurella to be our left back, right? So Brighton haven't got that much fun. Um, no, they they're not financially well off. So they say, Chelsea say, look, we'll give you 4.5 million for Cucurella. Okay, yep, yeah, we'll take that, get the money, reinvest. So Chelsea get 4.5 million for Cucurella. Then they say, yeah, we like the look of Caicedo. He had a good season last year. We'll buy him off you. 10 million. Wow, 10 million. I'll take that. So Chelsea get 10 million for um, Moise Caicedo. And that's it. That's what used to happen back in the day when Abramovich first took over. Examples. Glenn Johnson, West Ham's best fullback at the time. How much did we get him for? 4.5 million. Ashley Cole, the best left back to ever play in the Premier League. We got him from Arsenal for £5 million plus William Gallas. He was on the, in the final year of his contract. So literally, say £15 million. Pounds. That's the way it was back then. Damien Duff from Blackburn. 
9 million pounds, I think, or 10 million pounds. Joe Cole from West Ham, 7.5 billion. Those are the figures that we were dealing with. We stole Manchester City's best player, Sean Wright Phillips, and we didn't even need him. And because Man City weren't at financial muscle at that time, we could do that. And that's why, you know, we didn't have a lot of competitors. Then what happens? Along comes financial fair play. Sky are getting more powerful. And what happens? We, the money has rocketed up. BT Sport have come in. And the football money in the Premier League has skyrocketed. A team like Luton now, who, can, who are going to get be probably get relegated, they're going to be walking away from the Premier League with £100 million. Pounds. Yeah. One hundred million pounds. That's more than um, the 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 the, the uh, I think the Bundesliga prize money is for the whole Bundesliga is probably a hundred million. One club in the Premier League are getting that for getting relegated, and this this is what we're talking about now. The landscape has totally changed. So you know, gone are the days where Chelsea can just go out and get the best players from all the different clubs and they, they, they haven't got the financial muscle to compete. You know, Brighton, going back to Brighton, why, how much did we get Cucurella for? £63 million. Pounds. Why? Brighton don't need the money anymore. They're financially well off. £100 million for Moise Caicedo. And that's, the, that's those, those, those figures. That's what we're dealing with now. Every single Premier League can charge a premium for their players. So we've got to be scouting a lot um, smarter now and that's what the, the new owners have done they've come in they've scouted and they've got they've got they're buying potential because they don't want to be having their pants pulled down by the likes of your brightons anymore so they've invested a lot in young players and so that's the model that they've, they've gone with and that requires patience i keep saying i've been critical about them in the past about the experience because we do need a few experienced players as well as the younger players but we don't know whether this model is going to pay off we have to wait for whether it in two one year two years three to three years that's why i'm crying for patience we look at the arsenal project and you know people wanted arteta out now we're seeing what arsenal are capable of Klopp with liverpool we're seeing what they're capable of with time looking at this chelsea side inconsistent but if we're looking at it, there have been some promising signs. The way we competed with Manchester City, we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Manchester City against Arsenal. We were competitive against Arsenal. We should have won that game, but for individual errors. Um, okay, okay, we saw the inconsistencies when we played against Newcastle. So there are going to be ups and downs what you, what you get with a young team. But if you're seeing those, those good games, and once these players get more experienced, and they 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 um, start to understand the, the the game better. Then what you're going to see is you're going to see, in my opinion, you, you know there are there are signs that we're going to see a good side in the future, and that's all it is. You know, it's not a lack of ambition or anything else. It's seeing what is happening, being realistic about the whole situation, and looking forward to reaping the rewards um, later. And it's not going to happen if we keep chopping and changing. It's not going to happen, oh, um, Pochettino hasn't won three games, so let's attack him and get somebody else. Oh, this player's not performing, let's sell him and get somebody else. And that's what these guys want to do. Chopping, changing, chopping, changing, chopping, changing. It's not going to work, guys. It's not going to work. And so that's where I'm coming from. And I think that's where a lot of the fan base who supposedly are accepting lower standards are coming from. You know, we're not um, looking at lowering our standards, but we're seeing what is happening and we're seeing the bigger picture. So I hope I've educated a few of the fan base here. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think, um, and just one point, one more point actually, well, before I go, what I want to say, I know the owners have kind of made a pig's ear of it in their first season. A lot of people go back to the second or, or two, Kel, and some of the decisions that they made, getting rid of a lot of the backroom staff and everything else. Yeah, they have made a pig's ear at the beginning, but I say that it starts here. It starts here from this season because they've learnt from their mistakes. They've hired footballing people. They've got a manager who they, they want now. So 
I'm giving them from this to start of this season. Last season was a bit up in the air and there were reasons behind that and we know that because they, they everything was rushed getting in you know, we had Todd Bowley being the director of football with no no experience in that's football taking advantage of and that's because we couldn't get people in place because we didn't know who our owners were gonna be until um late into the into the process and by then you know you you, you, you say to a director of football I want if I get the the Chelsea ownership, I want you to be in charge. Are they going to say yeah, yeah, yeah? I'll definitely hand in my notice tomorrow and come. No, they what they want a bit of certainty. There was uncertainty around that, so it's hard to get people in place if there's uncertainty around the club. So that's why I'm going to give them a bit of slack. I'm not an apologist for for them for the owners. You know, some people may think I am. I'm not. I know they are going to. I'm going to hold them. <clears throat> to everything that they do and if they mess it up again in the next two or three seasons then i'll be on their back but i'm one who's just gonna give them a bit of time just to see how this project pans out so let me know your thoughts in the section below and don't forget to like subscribe turn on post notifications to be notified every time i make a video take care bye, -bye.